Welcome to the Matters Today program. This is Matters Today, and I am Joyce Young, and thank you so much again for tuning into the program. This is the day that the Lord have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I am so delighted today about uh, my guest, her testimony of she and her family, how the Lord, uh, uh, how they survived and the Lord brought them through the Korean War and uh, just all the many circumstances in her life that she have walked through and God was yet there on every hand. And you know, it just kind of proves how we in the body of Christ and we uh, that know the Lord and we have submitted to him don't have to be moved by what we see or the circumstances that we find ourselves in because as you listen to my guest on today, you will hear and see how God is Lord and he is King. So I want you to welcome my guest today. I have with me Mrs. Chang Wang Hagenmacher. Thank you for being on the program today. You're welcome. God bless you. I am so glad that you're here. And I had a chance to hear um, Mrs. Hagenmacher at another event, and I was just so excited to invite her to come and be on the program today. But one of the first things that you want to do is to uh, read Psalms 23, one of your favorite, because you said that this is a Psalms that the word that the Lord just really brought yes. you through. So yes. why don't you read that? You want to read that in Korean? If you want me to read in Korean, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yehovah는 나의 목자시니 내가 부족함이 없으리로다. 그가 나를 푸른 처장에 누이시며 쉴만한 물가로 인도하시는도다. 내 영혼을 소생시키시고 자기 이름을 위하여 의의 길로 인도하시는도다. 내가 사망의 음침한 골짜기로 다닐지라도 해를 두려워하지 않을 것은 주께서 나와 함께 하심이라. 지팡이와 막대기가 나를 안위하시나이다. 주께서 내 원수의 목전에서 내게 상을 베푸시고 기름으로 내 머리에 바르셨으니 내 잔이 넘치나이다. 나의 평생의 선하심과 인자하심이 정령 나를 따르리니 내가 여호와의 Amen. Praise God. What she's just read was Psalms 23, and I'm going to read it in English for you uh, right now. And if you know anything about the Bible, Psalms in the in the book of Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. He make me to lie down in green pastures. He lead me besides the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That was Psalms 23. You know, uh, I'm so, every time, that's the second time I've heard you read that in your language, and it just really, why does that move you so like that? Because Every time, Lord give me so many times, uh, near to the death, he again and again give me a grace to not to die. Always there he send someone or something happen that I will be survived. Yes, ma'am. So when I think about that, it just fit to the, this scripture so well, the God, is the David was so touched by the Lord to his circumstances, but my situation is very similar. That's why I am always touched. Praise God. That's awesome. That is so awesome. You know, why don't you tell me a little bit about your family? I know that um, your husband had passed, has passed away and that you have several, cho three children, two, two children of your own, seven grandchildren. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your family? All right. My name is Changwon Hagenmacher, 81 years old, <laughs> grandmothers of seven grandchildren. And I like to talk about faith. 
faith and the trust and endless love of God. He loved me so much. It is uh, re really I cannot express, I cannot explain how it was. And his love was so deep. And blessings of Almighty God, our Lord Jesus, the Savior. He is a always wonderful, wonderful Savior. And you really just, uh, all my children, we raised in order to serve God. And uh, they are always. Praise God. Yes. Praise so God. they are very faithful. Praise and, the Lord. And my. What I like to talk about is why I become Christian. And uh, without my grandfather, I was not. My grandfather was Methodist. In Korea, very, very first Koreans, Korean, the Christians, the king ordered to be killed or deny Christ, but uh, he, decide to he will serve God. And I am so appreciate my grandfather because uh, he was faithfully stand for and uh, his father was a uh, governor of Pyongyang and the uh, king ordered it so he could not help even with his sons. He had uh, three sons and my grandfather was middle one and uh, he just locked them into the courtyard and overnight he gave time to think about it. And But my grandfather and uh, their brothers decide, even we die, we will serve God. So that's what their decision was. But they didn't know their servant was a hidden Christian. They, because he is a servant, he cannot open himself, I, I will accept. But uh, he is uh, just a hidden Christian who was uh, really loving God, and uh, he just uh, secretly nighttime, he took out all his entire life savings to them and uh, prepared the food, and down in the hill, he prepared uh, the farmer's ox cart, like a trailer and pulling, and uh, he just uh, give to them all entire his life savings and everything to let them go to the capital city. Now this is, a, excuse me, I'm sorry. This is the servant that freed the brothers? Freed the brothers and the other farmer is uh, bring them to the capital city. Oh my, praise the Lord, so praise per, the Lord. Perhaps we think perhaps that serpent is cured. Okay, hold on one second. We have to go to break. Uh, don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. We have so much more to share with you. God bless you. Welcome back to Matters Today. This is Matters Today, and I am Joyce Young, your host, and I'm talking today with my guest, Mrs. Chang Wan um, Hagenmacher. And I, again, I'd like to thank you so much for being on the program today. Yeah. Praise God. Now, before we went to break, you were sharing about your grandfather, you know, being a Methodist pastor in his te life and his testimony. And for those of you that just tuned in, um, uh, my guest is sharing and about her life and career and how, how she and her family survived that and how God brought them through at every step, every circumstance in their lives. So she's talking about her grandfather now. Why don't you continue to share? They safely arrived to missionary Appenzella's home and uh, their oldest brother decided to become uh, the pastor. Your and uncle, that, that would have been your, your, your grand grandfather's uncle. Bro grand uncle, yeah. okay. And youngest one 
wants to be a businessman. So actually he made all the business and supported their brothers. And my grandfather decided to homeschooling by the open seller and uh, he really become a somebody. And uh, the first, he become English teacher in Korea. And second, he become first classic music musician and who is uh, playing violinist. He, he was a violinist and he was a praying, playing in front of the king. Mm. The, that was the last king in Korea. He translated English King James Bible to Korean Bible. And he made a national anthem in Korea. And, so, and then after he was always faithfully work for the Lord, even when he got the old, he ministered to the Catholic priest and that made them be a really born again. Praise God, praise God. Now, I like to talk about uh, the war story. So my Christian, is, Christian life was uh, growing strong and then when I just a month before my 17th birthday, the Korean World War broke 1950, June the 25th. The war broke and the Korean, North Korean come down with the 1,000 Russian tank. And it suddenly happened, so not too many people are able to run away. And who, most of the people who could not run away, they are all captured and get killed. And my family, some of them are like that too. Okay. Yes. And the second day, we have to run away. Mm -hmm. But before run away, middle of night, the door was a bang, bang. So I go out and look who that is. And there is a... North Korean military man is uh, standing with a gun and uh, you come out, you go with me. So I went and uh, he pulled me to go to the school ground and uh, the school office, he pulled me in and surprised, I was surprised in my life, my next neighbor who I was always play together and a good friend of mine happens to be a communist, uh, very high officer. And uh, she handed to, over me a very nicely, quietly, red band in your arm. And she says, now you go out in that section and lead all these young people. And in other words, they are in, you to take care of. If someone run away, then you are going to get killed. And I looked through those people. There was my other next neighbor, the high school friends. And the, the two of them asked me, can you take us to the toilet? So I said, okay. And we three went to the toilet and we just closed the toilet. There was tiny, tiny, little, small window was there and we are barely able to crawl out. And he, one went out and the second the one is helping me to get out. And then he come out the third and we three of them run for our life. So you were able to escape? Yes, uh, able to escape. Okay. And uh, I found out nobody was, even I'm running, nobody was uh, checking on me or attention to me. Mm. So then I found out after, because I have a red armband, I'm a leader of theirs, 
why they have to stop me. And God arranged even that point. And we are serving wonderful, wonderful Lord if you just trust him. And so we run, run. I took my sister and the brother and run to the north side where is my mother's family was there. Okay, now when you escaped and you, you were able to run back home Not and get your family, uh -huh. you were able to go get your family and then go to North yes, Korea? Yes, mother already went out there, but the, just the brother and sister was okay. left there. Okay. So I took them and there was also the her, one of the her family, the farming family was there to wait on me so he can lead where to go. Mm -hmm. So we walk 6 a.m. through midnight. Mm -hmm. And uh, all that time, we are so hungry. And on the way, we looked to one of the farmer's place in afternoon. Beautiful tomato was there. So we ate that tomato. And then a few minutes after we just walk on, there was a creek. Clean water is running, and we are thirsty. So we want to drink that water, and we drink all we can with the hands. And then we walk a little more. There was a dead body lay on that water. So we throw up everything what we eat. Oh, my. Yes, because too many people are killed by the... By the stream of water. Was that a river? Or? But that's just a little stream. Okay. But they just killed the, with the gun. Whosoever walked, you just killed. Mm -hmm. And so that, then we arrived to that place where Lord again arranged for one big room with one kitchen in you know, one of the school teachers' house. So we, we are there. And uh, from next day, the problem raised. We don't have nothing to eat. So my sister and I went to the mountain to try to get the acorn. Here, Louisiana, you have uh, plenty of acorn, but uh, you just the uh, squirrels are eating and uh, not the human. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we collect all that acorns and uh, all the yellow caterpillars are shooting us and then we are so red every place and hurt. But Lord was again so good, we got the abundant of uh, acorn, a couple of uh, bushels of acorn, and we bring home and uh, crushed and then change the water every day and until all the bitterness is gone. So with that, my mother put the little grain and the all kind of whatever she can dream of it, put it there, and then we made a nice edible pad, and then steam it, and we we got the one day we are only allowed to eat one piece of that food, mm -hmm. and well, you know, it's amazing to me how. You know, you were, like you said, you and your family were hungry. You didn't have anything. You couldn't mm -hmm. go to the grocery store and buy anything. No, there is no grocery right. store. Right. And so and you didn't have any resources, but the Lord took what he had. Yes. And then you, and then gave your mom, gave you guys the uh, instruction how to treat it, to make it fit to eat. My mother happens to be, when she went to college, she happens to be study the home economy. And she learned all about it, mm. how to survive. Mm. So that's why beans have all the protein and all kind of thing. And whenever farmers have a place for us to work, I went and worked for digging a potato and then received the butcher of a potato home and the fresh beans, we go and cut the beans for them and they give us abundance of uh, God. beans. So we have a uh, food so to you, eat. So you're pretty much running at this point where you can't go back home. You can't go back no to your home. No way to go home. Mm -hmm. 
if you go home, you are going to get killed. So, and then I went to the, there is a creek, goes water, goes to the, up to the, my uh, waistline and with the basket and I just uh, shake the, all the grass in the side of the creek and you catch a small size of uh, the fish and the little grass shrimp and that also we brought home and we ate it. Praise God. Yes. Now, to your knowledge, were there other families that you saw living, surviving by the hand of the Lord like you? They? On the run as well? I mean, I know you probably wouldn't have seen a lot of them, but... Most of them are run away to the south. Okay. And the, who run away to the north is only our family I know. Oh, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So... That's how we survived. And then one, one and a half months, we survived that way. And then suddenly one day, North Korean policemen come and the old, old school teachers, sister and myself to come out. So we come out and they hear old, old, Hold on one moment, please. Uh, we have to go to break in a moment, but I want you to stay tuned in. Please come right back. Uh, I want my guest to share her testimony, how the Lord brought them through the Korean War. Welcome back to the program. Uh, thank you for coming back. I'm talking to my guest today, uh, Mrs. Chang Wan Hagenmacher, and she's talking about her life it, through the Korean War and how the Lord delivered her and her family. So before we went to break, we were talking about how, um, you know, you and your, it had been about a month and a half, you've been on the run, and now you're getting ready to go back. No, I was not ready to oh, go oh, back. Oh, you're not. I'm sorry. It's <laughs> Someone okay. came it's to... A, the policeman came. The policeman came. came. Okay. And then police ordered me to, me and the school teacher's sister to come out, police station, which you have to walk two hours in Mountain Road. And uh, tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock sharp, you to come out. You say, yes, sir. And uh, six o'clock in the morning, we get up, and then we start walking. My mother forced me to eat that one piece of uh, food, and she prayed over me, Lord, she is in your hands. So every morning, every day, they question same thing, same thing, but I don't know why they kept us in the, until the 8 o'clock in the evening. So we, when we arrived back home, it's 10 o'clock in the night. And one day, that girl was so beautiful, therefore the police chief took her as his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. But the, the, before, the day before, she look at my gold watch, 24 carat the gold watch, and she was saying, I, I sure like to have that kind of gold watch in my life once. And the, her eyes was tearful. So then, Lord is giving me a, such a, I, I cannot express that uh, how much it, the compassion I had uh, towards the her. So I says, uh, yeah, why not? I just uh, took off my watch. I now placed... Who, that was your father's watch? Yes, was that your, The only thing watch. you had left yes. of your father? Yes. Okay. And they gave it to her arm, put her arm, and she was uh, tearful and crying. And because of that watch, in you know, one month I was always every day go and back and forth. And uh, one day she was uh, showing me to come. 
So I went and then she, in the bathroom, she was whispered to me, do not come back anymore. Tomorrow is your day to be executed. So I said, okay, and ran home that night. I don't know how I ran. I was so fast running. And whenever I go back home, the night is so dark and mountain, the coyote is uh, so many coyotes there and then saying, oh, I, my hair is like uh, going up. And 17 years old. Yes. By yourself out yes. in the running, yes. running up and yes. down mountains. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And then uh, whenever I get uh, scared, I sing, Jesus loves me, this I know. And uh, whenever I sing that, I have such a peace and uh, no more afraid. So when I arrive home, I took my sister and uh, my brother and explained to the mother, I needed to go someplace to hide. Tomorrow they will be execute me. So she brought uh, to her family and they had a secret place to hide. And uh, that's where we are hide for uh, one week. Praise God. Now, let me, let me back it up for just a moment. When I talked with you about a week ago, you shared with me that when the young lady saw your watch, which was your father's watch, your father was deceased. Yes. And that was the only thing that you had. But when she uh, inquired about the watch, the Lord had given you such a love for her. Yes. Because the average person so, would not have given up yes. that watch. Yep. In fact, she could have taken it. But, but God used that to save your life. That is true. Yes. Yes. That's always so we Thanksgiving. Mm. Still, we are thinking about the time to time, and the, we whole family is giving Lord the Thanksgiving for that situation. Mm. Praise God. So, week after South Korean soldiers arrived there and announced, now you all come out, you are safe. And if you want to go home, you can also go home because you are very safe now because of all the American soldiers and the Korean soldiers are now taking care of capital city where we live. Mm. So we went and then we had a, that is another blessing. The Lord gave my brother before he ran away to the South he hide, he wants to hide everything up in the attic. So rice and uh, all the grains and the salt, sugar and soy sauce, everything edible he hide up in the attic. So when we come back this time, we have abundant of food. <laughs> so, so you were able to go back home and have all this food yes. have every, and your house was still there. Still there and untouched. Praise God. The Lord is just kept uh, completely sealed, it seems to Praise be. Praise God. And uh, so we had a good time. Christmas arrived. We back to home, sep middle of September, and the back to the home. We have a good time. And the Christmas come. So we had a real good Christmas. And then not even week. The this time, Chinese soldier, Chinese soldier and North Koreans are coming together. So we, my mother's best friend, her husband is uh, uh, the Air Force officer. So he arranged for us to go down by the train. So we just, uh, 4th of January, we run again for our life. And my mother, this time problem was my mother, she was so much worried about that younger little sister will be frozen to the death. So she put the sister on my back and then bound, bound around and then on the top, she 
put about, I uh, look like about 10 inch thick of the cotton blanket all around me. And then again, yards and yards of material making a round, round to bound. So mm -hmm. the baby and the, I will <laughs> hold together. And we arrived at the train station and the, it happens to be an open train, that, which is uh, they transport the, all the coal. I see. I tried to climbing up and the train happens to move and I fell. But again, grace of the Lord arranged the everything. Down there was a young, strong soldier was standing there and then grabbed me and the baby. Mm -hmm. So we are again saved that time. I screamed, thank you, Jesus. And I cried. Praise God. Then we went to the south, middle south. We call it the place name is Tegu. And we arrived there. And one week, train takes one week to bring us because in between they always uh, take the head of the train to, to do the some other thing and then come back and then pull us little more. Mm -hmm. So one week after we arrived, the family in Tegu. There we lived two years, and two years after, we come back to the, our home again. Mm. Yes. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. And then we are very happily, really happily lived there. There's so much information uh, about Mrs. Chang Wan Hagen Macher. So much information, and that she's um, she's trying to share, and we're being led by the Lord here as to what she um, is sharing. But her mother is a is a, was a, a pastor. Your mom, your mother was a she, pastor. She established three she, churches. Yes, and your sister. Is, is a pastor, correct? Yes. Praise God. And so, and your brother, deaf and dumb, preaches the word. He still, he is going out in the Los Angeles and then talk to the, all the, the deaf and dumbs and the, do not ever, ever, ever do not catch the 666. <laughs> that God. is his preaching. <laughs> Praise God. And, and another point, because we may not get to it, and I want Mrs. and I know Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Chain Wang is looking at her notes. But another thing is that the Lord sent Nora Lamb mm -hmm. to your her church, yes, and prophesied to her husband that he was going to, because you and your husband were missionaries, yes, into several many different mm -hmm. countries, and God sent her there to prophesy to your husband. Oh, so, so much, so much testimony. We went. Uh, we have been in the Brother Eckers Church, Airline Christian Assembly, and the- That's in uh, Baton Rouge? Yes. Okay. The, my husband and I got married, you know, just he, he fell in love with my eyes. My eyes was uh, <laughs> so shine. That time I was a born again Christian, so I was so full of Lord and wants to work for whatever I could work. And then therefore my eyes was, uh, seems to be a uh, twinkling shine. And he was uh, so much uh, fall in love with that, so he want to marry. And uh, when he meet me and the one week after we are married, yes. Uh, we have to go to break. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back.
Welcome back to the program. I'm Joyce Young, your host, and we're talking today to Mrs. Chang Wan Hagenmacher, and she's talking about her life through the Korean War, how God had uh, preserved her and her family, how uh, when she got married, and she's, and the Lord just really used her and her husband on the missionary field, and I just want you to really uh, pay attention to her testimony because it's such a blessing. Uh, we were sharing during the break how we are so caught up here in America, and today we're so caught up in our own problems and circumstances. But we need to see and hear how God will bring us through. God is in control, in charge of, in control, in charge of everything, Amen. everything. He is Amen. Lord and he is king. And that's what you were Amen. sharing with us. How when you needed food, he was there. You know, you're Amen. in your family. He protected you. You thought Amen. you were taking uh, two people to the bathroom, but God had made a way of escape for you. Amen. Praise God. And then even giving away something really valuable, how God preserved your life, Amen. saved your life. And you know, and, and another thing too is how whenever the military people came, they always call you out. You know, they you went to the door, they call you out. Uh, when they came to you when you were up in the mountain area, they came, they called you out. So it's just amazing how, and yet today, here are you sitting here 81 years of age, and you are just talking about, I mean, it's so much. One thing I'm gonna make sure that you share before we go off the air, but um, it's just so much the Lord is doing. Tell us a little bit about the missionary field, you and your husband. Nora Lamb prophesied right. to him, and the Lord just sent you out, you and your husband. Yeah, Laura Lamb came to the Victory Bible Fellowship, and uh, she had uh, given altar call, and my husband ran out for an altar. And uh, when he kneeled down, she, there is uh, hundreds of people in the altar, but she come down and lay hands on him first. And then she prophesied, Lord is calling you to go for a mission field. Mm -hmm. And that's how we become, a, we decide to, one day we will go to the missionary. But uh, another important thing I like to talk about is uh, King Aga Khan is uh, offering my husband 18, uh, 18, $18,000 in a month salary for three years in East Pakistan. But then the other hand, the Mississippi Cooperation offered $3,800 per month for salary and give him a technical director's position. And his, my husband's heart was so troubled, so he asked my mother to pray and my mother prayed one week. Lord says, do not go to the East Pakistan, you will be killed. Go to the USA, I will bless you. So he obeyed and we came to the USA. Praise God. Yes. Praise and, God. And the Lola Ram says, uh, we are going to. And then the one day, the plant manager suddenly called him and the, all the managers, all the managers and wives are supposed to go to the Houston, Texas to trans, transition meditation or something like that for a new age. And uh, if not, then they have to cut your neck. Mm. So my husband and I wrote to the, him our testimony and our belief, and therefore the price was, you cannot work here no more, so you just uh, have to retire early. So my husband says, okay, I will serve the Lord and I will retire because of that testimony. Praise the, God. Yes, Praise because God. of uh, Laura Lynn. Praise God. So, then, Last day, he wants to go and work, and the telephone ring in the six o'clock in the morning, and he suddenly screamed, he says, my new job is here. So then, other end, the phone call says, we, we are Switzerland, this and this company. Would you like to lead to Bangladesh 170 people? So he says, Yes. 
So that's how we ended up with the Bangladesh going mission, mission field. And that mission field was uh, so blessed. I teach the ladies how to bake bread and how to make cookies for their children. And I teach them how to paint. And uh, my husband then teach them a Bible. And he was uh, teaching a Bible one night. He just uh, flip hands like that. And then upper room, how the Lord sent the Holy Ghost to 120 people. Mm -hmm. So everybody suddenly, he says, now. And everybody was talking, 15 people all together at once. Oh. They talking in the tongue. So I, we are praising the Lord at that time and that he baptized them in the bathtub because of the water is the dirty and the, they are serving God real wonderfully. The, and two days before our departure, we go to the Korean church. They invite us to minister and we minister and 300 Korean Hyundai people got saved and Holy Ghost filled. And the, we are really spoiled by the Lord at that time. Praise God. Yes. So, so you meant when, how many how many places did you go to on the mission field? About the ten countries. Ten countries. Mm -hmm. And next one was Indonesia. Okay. Went to three and a half years. Mm -hmm. And the Indonesia, the it is a really really hard place to minister because they are Muslim people, and they want me to talk about and pray for them, but they don't want me to go out and talk to them to whom I minister to, because if they found out, they are going to get killed. So they are so afraid. But the Lord opened for me to pray for Japanese people. I said, Lord, no, because they come to the occupied Korea and they kill the Koreans so many. I just hate them. I don't, I cannot minister to them. Lord says, listen, my child, I love them as much as I love you. So pray for them. So I pray for them since then. And the Lord opened up two ladies to come and paint with me because they happens to be a painter too. Praise God. Yes. <laughs> and I started to minister, and the, the one of the lady name is Nago, Nagao. She lost her gold teeth, the filler, and she's worried about it, and she said, what to do, what to do? So I said, why don't you go and uh, and she did, and uh, she found it. <laughs> then, <laughs> okay, hold on one moment, please. We have to go to break. Um, we're going to break. Don't, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. We have a little more to share with you. Praise God. Welcome back to the program. Thank you so much for tuning in. I know that we're closing out, but thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for watching. I just hope that this program has been a blessing to you. If you would like to get in contact uh, with my guest, Mrs. Uh, Chang Wan Hagenmacher, please call us here at the station and we will get the information to you. You can call us at 985-902-8888. 
888. You may want to contact us so that uh, and talk with her so that she can come and share her testimony in the fullness. There is so much that she has not shared, but what she has shared is such a blessing to us. And we just thank you for watching. And again, uh, I want to just thank you for being on the program. I love you. I'm so glad that the Lord brought you into my life. I just love you. I love your spirit. I love your, your life, your testimony. And it's, it's something how God just Put people together that probably would never, ever meet any other way. And you are one of those people that just comes in someone's life and make a difference. You really, honestly, you make a difference. But before we get uh, back, I want uh, one thing I wanted to just bring up is that um, and we won't get into the full part of that testimony. But when your husband passed away, OK, and um you, to make it short, your husband had passed away. You had gone over back over to a surprise party and for your uh, mother. mother. And But at one point, you sit down in the chair, you said, and you put your head down. Being alone for the first time, you know, never, ever being alone, really, and sit down and you said, Lord, what am I going to do and how God appeared? Share that, please. Just take about a minute or two and share oh, that. Right. When I was... Uh just to come back from the hospital, and then... Which the I, Lord had healed her of cancer. I was uh, so lonely, lonesome, and sit down with the Bible, and then close my eyes, or sometimes open my eyes, and I say, where I am, Lord, now what? And suddenly, that moment, I saw the... Gar white, snow white garment, and the just a hood coming through the, my front, and the stood there, and I dare to look up. I know that was the Jesus, and the, all my body is just a, like a, the shower water pouring over you, and the, I just. Uh, have a, such a peace coming down in my entire body. And I could jump up and uh, I could dance, really. And uh, then suddenly I looked up, he's just gone. And since then, I was uh, so always excited about the Lord. And uh, now, Lord, open the door for me. Praise God. If you open the door for me, I'm going to do whatever you want me to do. Praise God. Because I like to serve him even I am old. And I I don't know how to drive because I had a two ex accident and my husband forbid me to drive. Mm -hmm. So I cannot drive. But, there. but when he when you saw him come before you, what did he say? He said something to you. My child, do not worry. I am going to take care of you. Praise God. And everything you try yourself, you cannot make it. But you trust me and obey me and love me. And I will make it away as long as you live. And he is a wonderful Lord that we are serving. Yes. The only one thing I really like to talk to you, sisters and brothers, obey to the Lord if he, he said, tell you something. Never hesitate, but do not waste time. Obedience is better than a sacrifice. So obey and love him every day, thanksgiving him whether good or bad. Good thing we are very easy to thanksgiving, but the bad thing, it is very hard to thanksgiving, but you still have to learn how to thanksgiving to the even bad thing. Then you, re you will realize the Lord is going to open the new door, make you everything all right, and do not seek into the, the money because money doesn't help you too much. Praise God. Look for the face of the Lord and the, how can I do for the Lord? So he's a blessing 
is the most important. And again, I tell you, have a faith in the Lord. If you are sick, hanging on to the Lord. He is going to make you all right. Praise if God. you trust, that's why I say trust and trust and obey. Obedience is best one for us. Thank you for giving me opportunity today. And uh, everybody, I like to say, Lord, richly, richly bless you. And uh, my testimony is a real thing. And the Lord is going to bless you. Thank you. Thank you for being, for coming and sharing your testimony. And again, if you want to get in contact with her, please call us here at the station, 985-902-8888. You know, ever since you ch shared your testimony with me, I've just really taken it mm -hmm. to heart more. You just added more into my life. And we are just so glad that you are here today. Oh. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank I'm, you, Jesus. I'm glad I have a chance to share a little you, bit. Jesus. Praise God. And well, we're going to have you back again on the program. And again, we all here love you in this area, and I especially love you. Okay? I love you too. Okay, God bless you. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs>